Fine. Amen. We're going to get in the Word of God. Bring you the message that God spoke to me yesterday in a prayer meeting. Amen. See what the Lord will do for us in this service right here today. So glad you are here. Make yourself at home. Don't hold back. Jump in and let the Lord have his way today. Sing, young people. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord every day and night, never ending praise. May our incense rise. Let us bless the Lord every day and night, never ending praise. May our incense rise. dedicated their life to the Lord, amen, and are seeking His will in their life, and I sure am glad that they're with us here in person for us here at Haven Hope, and that we minister from a Bible school, and I thank you for the ones with me that are here for, to bless us and for us to bless them, amen, and we appreciate again them, them, all of you being here today, we'll hear some more from uh, our Brother Justice's parents and I want to hear him testify, say something good for the Lord. St. Luke's Gospel, let's get into the Word of God for time's sake, don't want to hold you all day. St. Luke's Gospel today, in prayer yesterday morning, prayer meeting, just in prayer, I had one of those special occasions where I heard God speak to my heart, and I do not stand here today before you as something great, or I'm not, oh, I'm just going to do it, or this, or that. But I know when God speaks to me. Why he speaks to me, I don't know, Brother Eddie. Have you ever figured that out, why he comes down to lowly men such as us? I don't know why, amen, but I know when. And um, there's been times I wanted to hear from God, and I couldn't. But sometimes he just drops a word in our soul. And I'm going to preach today. And um, you are going to be a little bit looking at me funny when I get started, but I believe the Lord's going to help us. Luke chapter 22, <clears throat> for, a, for a launching place, verse 54, Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. When they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour after another, confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he's a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock 
crew. Verse 61, the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter went out and wept bitterly. I want us to look from my text to the book of Matthew tonight, today, excuse me, this morning. I want us to go look at this exact same uh, word, uh, this same um, story. And again, three people said, I know you. Two said, I know you. I don't know him. Verse number 72, he denied with an oath, I don't know him. You know, your, your, your speech betrays you in verse 74. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. If the Lord would stand by me today, I'm going to preach for a few minutes on enough to make a man curse. Father, in the name of Jesus, would you help me to preach today, God? Would you anoint our ears to hear and our hearts to receive and our feet to respond to this altar today? You know what's going on in the war inside of men and women in this sanctuary today. You know the turmoil of my own soul today as I stand here. Grant me grace to preach what you whispered into my soul yesterday morning in prayer meeting. And I'll forever give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. And everybody said... Amen. Stretch your hands this way, would you, and pray for me. Would you do that for me this morning? I need a special anointing. I need a special anointing to bring forth the word of God today. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Enough to make a man curse. How many times have you heard that saying? In your life. Peter is a very peculiar fellow in the Word of God. He is a great man. He does a lot of great things. He was always the one, the first one to jump out and do something. He was always the one who had his foot in his mouth, seemed like. But I, I want to be fair to Simon Peter today, and I have preached what I'm fixing to say before. Put yourself in his shoes today, and this is where I want to take you this morning. He has walked with Jesus for three, three and a half years. One of the very first he was, that was called to preach by God. He left everything to follow Christ, walked away from it all to follow this man. He was a disciple of John. Andrew, we know, was, and he had told his brother about him, and they were the first disciples called. He's always the first one to go, and in a meeting, a just a few hours prior to this, in a meeting, Jesus said, all of you are going to be offended in me this night. And Peter speaks up and said, I, I don't know what everybody else is going to do, but I'll die with you tonight. I don't know what everybody else is going to do, but I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I'll, I'm going to die. I'm ready to die for you and with you. And I want you to know something. Peter meant every word that he said. Something else peculiar took place that night. The same Christ that had told them three years plus earlier, don't take a sword, don't take no purse, don't take no money, now reverses plans. And he says, make sure you got a purse with some money in it. He said, if you got to sell your garment to buy a sword, you make sure you have a sword. And, 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 and they said, we got a sword here. And they said, it, it's enough. So he's just been given new instructions. Get a sword. Get some money saved up. Everything has been reversed in his life from what he was told three years prior and a little bit plus. Now he is in the dark. He's out there, so they, they go to a garden to pray. In this garden they pray, they pray, they pray. He sees Jesus. He comes out with blood running down his forehead. What in the world is going on? He's prayed to a sweat become as great drops of blood. Amen. They come out of the garden. Here comes the Roman army. How many understands that Peter was not so stupid that he did not know when I pull this sword out, it's gonna, I'm going to die right here. I know I can't kill this legion of Roman soldiers. I, I, it ain't going to happen, Brother Sam. So he knew when he pulled that sword out, this is a death. If you pull your, Just as much as if there was 15 cops in this parking lot with guns drawn and you pull a pistol out of your pocket and point it at them, you're going out of here. Do you understand that? 
Amen. People are so sure of it that they do a thing called suicide by cop. They know if I point a gun over there, they will take me out of this world. And Simon Peter knew that when he took that sword out, amen, that he was he just what he said, I will die with you. So he brings it down, he tries to split that man's head in two, and he ducks and he gets his ear and he cuts his ear off. And a very strange thing happened. He gets some more words, some more, put your sword away. Oh, come on with me. I'm trying to take you down the steps that Peter leads him to this place. And the sword cut, and he reaches down and puts the ear back on this man. You just, you just healed this guy. I'm trying to kill him and stand up for you, and you heal him. You put his ear back on, and they still haul you away. And so Peter follows him far off. He doesn't quit. He don't know what to do, Brother John. Oh, we talk about we, we bust him. He followed him far off. He tried standing right to the front of the line and dying with him. And he said, don't do this. So what do I, I don't know what to do. And he is, he, is, he is so confused by the time he gets there, and he's cold. And so he just simply finds a fire to warm by. And again, we preached on warming by the day. Devil's fire, and I'm not taking away from any preacher that's ever preached these messages, but it's just a cold night. He don't know what to do. He's tried to die. He's tried to surrender his life, and he's just cold, and he's standing there, and he's watching what's going to happen. He is so confused, and they and they come, and, and, and you know him. No, I just, just leave me alone. I, I, I'm, I'm in a bad state right here. I don't, I don't, I don't know him. <laughs> you know him. You was with him. No, you got the wrong guy. I don't even know who I am right now. I don't know who he is. I don't, I don't know him. He told me to do one thing. Now he's changed everything. And when I tried to do what I thought was supposed to be right, he rebuked me and put the ear back on. I, I really don't know him. I don't know what he's doing. And, and I don't, and I know that's not exactly what he meant. I'm not trying to put words in his mouth. I'm trying to preach to you what I felt in the prayer meeting yesterday morning. I really don't know. There's been times me and him was like that, and I knew exactly. I knew when that bland man come, he's gonna heal that guy right there. I knew, I knew what was coming. I could read it, I could feel it. I walked with him. I know what he liked to eat. I know how he slept. I know I know a lot about that man for three years. I've been with him. But right now, I really don't know him, and I don't know what he's doing, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do, and I don't know where to turn, and I don't know where to go. And the third person comes along and says, your speech betrays you. He said, all right, I saw this is enough to make a man curse. And I want to preach to you today that the goal of the enemy of our soul is today to do whatever it takes to drive us to a place to where we curse and swear and say, I don't know him. The goal of the enemy today is to bring you and I to a place in our spiritual walk, in our confusion, that we say, I really don't know what he's doing and I really don't know what to do. Brother Matthew, Mo Brother Michael Mobley climbed in my truck yesterday after an hour of good prayer, and we go down the road. I don't know what to tell him right now. I don't know the words to tell him, Brother James. I'm supposed to be the pastor. I'm supposed to be able to say, do this and do that and go here and go there. But he's an, I don't know, Brother Michael, what to tell you. Brother Eddie, I was supposed to be the preacher. I was supposed to be the spiritual leader. I was supposed to be able to say, do this and do that, but I can't lie. I don't know what to tell you. Amen. I, I, I tried, and I know how to love you, and I know how to put my arm around you. And, but, but let me just tell you, what he's saying, Brother Brent, because in the United States of America that we live in right now, the law and the judge will not back up the word of God. I know what this Bible says. I know what God wants. He wants our marriages to be together. He wants our homes to be together. But we don't have a judge in a society that will back us up uh, and will say yes the man is the head of the house and you're going to do what he said we don't have the law I know what the Bible says but America won't back up the book anymore are y'all listening to me I know what a child is supposed to do amen but you know what if you discipline your child amen they will come in and they'll arrest you amen for disciplining your child but it's okay to abort them before they're even born you can let them sit on a table and stick a pair of scissors in them and suck their brain 
brains out while they're yet alive, that's okay. But if you whip them for being bad, that's child abuse. I don't really even know what to tell you anymore. And I'm telling you what the devil's trying to do. I don't know if y'all have heard of something that's been ravaging the land for the last two years. I know you ain't heard of it. It's a thing called COVID. And preachers that have preached to us our whole lives that we trust God and God's our healer. This Bible that I read, it says you shall eat or drink any deadly thing and it will not hurt you. But they're telling us, amen, take the vaccine. Don't take the vaccine. If you take the vaccine, you don't trust God. If you don't take the vaccine, you're stupid. God expects us to have common sense. Uh, If you keep your church open, you're stupid. If you shut your church down, amen, uh, amen, you're done. Are y'all listening to me today? Until as he preached to us this morning, we are standing by the fire. We are shivering in the cold. Uh, and I have men in this church today that have no idea what God is doing. Uh, they don't know what they're supposed to do. Uh, and you don't know what you're supposed to do. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what the devil wants us to get to. Uh, to a place where you say this is enough. Uh, amen. To make a man curse. Uh, and say I can't take it no more. Uh, amen. God doesn't care. Uh, amen. I'm going to preach in this house today. Amen. That the devil wants you and I. Uh, amen. Brother How to get so broken down. Uh, and so confused. Uh, Amen. Not that we don't love him uh, and not that we don't believe in him uh, but to bring you to a place uh, and I feel the Holy Ghost in my heart uh, where you curse uh, and say I can't do it no more. Uh, I can't make it. Uh, I can't take it. Uh, I can't handle another phone call. Uh, I can't go to another funeral. Uh, amen. I can't fall out with another family member uh, and he wants you to throw up your hands uh, and curse uh, and say I just don't even know what to do anymore. There's a handful of you here today that's on the mountaintop, and I don't want you to come down off that mountain. I'll let y'all in a little secret being I'm tormenting Austin this morning. His nickname is Pee Wee. Hallelujah. Man, he get mad when I call him mad. Hallelujah. Now, he's, he ain't a bit of discouragement to him today. He's young. He's got the world by a tail. He's got him a girlfriend, going to get married. He ain't down today, and I don't want you to come down, son. It's the happiest time of your life, and you stay right there. But sitting right over here while one is rejoicing, I got one over here that's in just the opposite shape of his rejoicing. And brother McDaniel, everything within him is trying to hold on. He comes at 5.30 on Sunday night and goes to the prayer room for an hour. And for an hour he prays to God to help him. But when he comes out of there, brother Johnny... He's still only getting two-thirds of his paycheck. He's still got more bills and he's got money. His motor's blowed up in his car. And he's saying, God, where are you at up there? This is enough to make a man curse. Are y'all going to help me preach today? Y'all sitting here trying to look all spiritual on me. Amen. Oh, brother, bring that hole. You're a, no, I know exactly where you are, and I know where I'm at uh, because I'm a pastor in the middle of all this. Uh, amen. I'm going to tell you, uh, amen, brother Tim is sitting here by himself today. Uh, amen. Oh, you say, brother, I'm doing good. Great. Damn, I don't want you to come down. Uh, amen. But you weren't there. Uh, amen. One of my dearest church members, uh, amen, took her last breath. Uh, I have preached God's a healer. I believe God's a healer. Amen. Why did you take my 56 year old uh, amen dear saint uh, amen and know she's in a better place uh, I'm not. Uh, amen. Are y'all listening to me? Uh, in Christ you gotta die and you must pay the ultimate price. We're gonna save the world. Uh, amen. I don't understand all that. Uh, all I know is I'm standing here by this fire uh, and everything is confused in my mind uh, and every devil in hell is saying curse your God and die. Amen. And this pressure is enough to make a man and curse. Hey man, what are you going to do when the fire is on in your life today? The confusion. The devil wants to use confusion to make a man curse. I want to preach to you today. The devil wants to take calamity and make a man curse. Well, you are looking at me today. I'm either got you against the ropes or you're looking at me saying you've lost your mind, Pastor. Calamity. Trial. Hey, Job, how you doing, buddy? I'm blessed. I got sons. I got daughters. I'm serving God, a perfect and an upright man. Take everything from him, and guess what he did? Naked came I into the world, and naked returned I hither. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Woo! What a guy. What a man. Watch him. Oh, man. He's strong. 
We don't know how long it was, but he never got his sons back, his daughters back. All we know is that, again, do they go once a year? Our calendar, 365 days? We don't know. Again, the sons of God present themselves. And let's just say they come once a year on our calendar. He's been a year without his family, nothing but his wife. He's lost his possessions, his everything, his children and all. And he still maintained his integrity. And again, the devil comes and he says, if you consider God, this time God kind of smirks at him. Says, have you considered my servant Job? How he maintaineth his integrity, though, you move, though you've moved me to destroy him without a cause? Right, what do you think now, big man? What do you think now, Lucifer? I took the heads down. He ain't quitting. He ain't giving up. Let me touch his skin. All right, go ahead. And he touches his skin, and guess what Job does? He scrapes his bulls and he worships. And his friends come, and it's so bad. Hey, man, that for seven days, they can't even speak. They just sit there for seven days, and they just look at him, and they cry with him, and they mourn for seven days. You know how long that is to not speak a word and just sit with your friend and cry? But then there's chapter number three. And Job cursed the day. That he was born. We held up good the first year. We made it through year and a half. Got to year number two. We've been shouting. We've been running. The church has been rolling on. But how much can one man take? Are you listening to me? The first time she left, I shouted on and said, I pressed on. Amen. I knew. I can't. And God brought it back. And we're, amen. But now, amen. How many times can I handle this? How many times can I come back to this battle? How many times? Are you listening to me? Brother Matthew Mobley didn't commit one sin, maintain his integrity all that time. But everybody, the devil says, I'll push you and I'll push you and I'll push you until I find out what's enough to make a man curse. Oh, I wish I could preach in this house today. Amen. And he brings confusion. And and he brings calamity huh? and he breaks things huh? and he hurts people huh? and he's the prince of the power of the air huh? until he gets you to go out. Hey, what are you saying, Brother Brent? Huh? Hey, man, why do you think they're backslid today? Huh? Why do you think they're not here today? Huh? Hey, man, because the constant bombardment of hell huh? until they finally found huh? a way to make them crack huh? and say, I never did believe holiness anyway. Huh? I never did believe it anyhow. Huh? And that's what the devil wants for you and I huh? in this sanctuary today. Huh? Hey, man, for the confusion huh? and the calamity. Huh? Amen, to bring us to a place uh, and do just enough to make a man curse. Uh, lift your hands uh, and ask God to help me this morning. She's made it 80 years, Brother Sam. You think she could just slide home now? But she lives in up in D.C. now, going to chemo treatments. She's still holding on. And the devil says, I'm going to ride her to the very end. I'm going to do whatever I can to get her to say, God don't care. Why would he do this to me? I'm out in left field somewhere today. You've got, oh, yeah, look at you. You go to church. You pray with everybody. You do this. You do that. Hey, man, how come you've been eight, nine, ten months without a job? He never stops, y'all. And you're sitting there going, oh, yeah, but I'm strong. I can handle anything. Job was pretty strong. He's a lot stronger than I was, Brother Eddie. I remember in chapter 3, he cursed the day he was born. I can't take it no more. I just wish I'd have died. I wish I'd have never been born, and I want to preach to you that confusion. Amen. Will bring bring you, cause you to curse. Amen. Calamity will cause you to curse. Amen. You listen to me, and there's one thing else that we're fighting in this day and hour. And I just went to a preacher's meeting and watched 300 beaten down preachers walk around and look at the scars. Amen. With a dazed look in their eye. Amen. As they're looking around, say, What do we do now? Where do we go now? Almost canceled the preacher's meeting because they don't know what to do. But say, Man, we got to have a meeting. Amen. We staggered through our last revival, never had a revival where everybody in the church was sick but we said brother Brent, we can't afford to cancel we got to have revival and we drug ourselves in there and I drug myself in here so sick I couldn't hardly stand just because I said man we got to have something huh? we got to have a move of God huh? I don't want to lose a fourth family or a fifth family hey, amen brother Michael needs to hear a word huh? and brother Eddie needs some strength huh? hey, amen are y'all going to help me preach hey, amen huh? hey, amen and Alexi needs to touch God huh? and brother Justin White huh? hey, amen needs some strength huh? and we drug him with a dazed look in our eye and we had revival 
Brother James, we pushed on and I'm still here today. And just for the record, I've got an ending to this, okay? So don't nobody quit me right now. But let you, and up to this day, I haven't said, God, I curse you and die. I haven't even cursed and said, I wish I wasn't born. But I want to preach to you the third thing that'll make you curse. Amen. Is the call of God on your life. What are you talking about, Brother Brent? Amen. In Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 14, a discouraged preacher, amen, said, Cursed be the man that told my dad the good news of my birth. Amen. I wish he died. I wish he'd have put a sword and killed me. Y'all ain't going to help me preach, are you? Amen. I've been preaching for 20 chapters. I ain't got one convert. Nobody wants to hear it. Why do I have to be the preacher? Why does everybody have to hate me? Why do I have to be everybody's enemy? I just would have been a plumber. I'd have just built houses. Amen. Y'all going to help me? Why do I have to have it? Amen. How come I got to go to church? Everybody else sits home and watches TV and everything's going great. But I feel a call. I got to do something for God. And Jeremiah said, Amen. Cursed be the man. Amen. That told my daddy the good news of my birth. Why? Because the call was so heavy that he cracked under the pressure. And the devil said, Yeah, that's what I've been waiting for. I finally turned up a heat enough. Amen. To make a man curse. I wish I could preach today. And that's what the devil is trying to do in this church this morning. He wants to do just enough to make you curse in your soul. Did you walk in here today, Brother James, with a desire to quit God? You wouldn't have come if you wanted to quit. Would you be honest with your pastor? Would you walk in here in somewhat of a daze and walk in here and say, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. I'm trying to figure out what, how to handle all this. You say God's a healer. Yeah, he is. God save anybody. Yeah, he will. Well, how come my son's not saved? How come my son's got three different kids by three different women and, and I don't know what to do and I don't know how to help them all at once and one don't like me and one talks to me and one don't. My daughter's out here and they're doing this. And, hey Amen. And I don't know where to turn and they just I just wish they turned to Jesus but they won't turn to Jesus. Hey Amen. And they want to tell you what he wants us to do. He wants us to the, the blessing of our children. That should be our greatest joy. Hey Amen. To become a curse to us. And we just I just wish I'd never had them. I just wish I'd never got married. I just wish I'd never had a wife. I just wish I'd never, huh? And he takes away all the joy. And, and at that moment in time, yes, we're looking back, Brother Sam, and we say, hey, remember Simon Peter, when, when your shadow is here, you remember when you did this, you did that, or what you're going to do when it comes? Hey, remember right now, all that's really out of my mind. Yes, I know. God, don't you see this big church, Brother Bree? Yeah, I, yeah. Remind me of it. Remind me about that. Because I'm trying to get a hold of something here. And why? And why aren't we laying hands on the sick and they being healed? And why ain't God raising them up? And how come the, hey, man, David said, I got in such a slippery place. Hey, man, my feet well now. The man after God's own heart almost cursed. Are y'all here today? I almost gave up. Hey, man, why? Because it seemed like I was sick and the sinner was well. It seemed like I was broke and the sinner was rich. It seemed like I was hurting and the sinner was healthy. Oh, y'all gonna help me preach. And a man after God's own heart. I'm preaching to you today. Hey, man, said I about got to a place where I said, forget it. Hey, and I almost slept, I almost gave up. And then he entered, uttered those faithful words until I went into the sanctuary. And I do not understand, amen, how to tell you today, but I'm gonna just be honest with you. What sometimes is the greatest burden in my life is trying to get us to heaven. It's also my greatest joy. And I said, I don't know, I can walk in the doors. I don't know what to tell them. But we get in here and the Holy Ghost begins to fall and the spirit of God begins to move and the presence of God falls one more time and nothing's changed but I feel like traveling on just a little bit longer yeah. how much pressure is the devil going to apply just enough to make you curse Is he going to win? I got friends. They, they 
walked away from his whole swag. Not only, Brother Aaron, are they walked away, they're going in completely different doctrines. I can say a man said, I quit and backslide. No, they're not doing that. They're walking away. Amen. Leaving us behind. Getting online and posting. Amen, videos of how wrong we are and why we're wrong and trying to tear us down and bring everybody else they can down with them. Huh? How I many brothers and sisters, Paul said, Alexander the coppersmith had done me much evil. Daryl Littleton of Texarkana, Arkansas, one of the finest men I ever knew, evangelist, preacher, my friend. We went, we, I mean, you, Brother Sam, you'd have had, you could have beat me with a stick and I'd have never said, that man will never compromise. He'll never quit. Pioneer the church, uh, one of the finest, strongest young brothers, my friend, my brother, amen, my help me. To, amen, a man I could lean upon. Uh, he'd have been here preaching for us except one problem. Uh, he took that big church he pioneered uh, and said, now, it's a cowboy church uh, and it's come as you are uh, and his wife walking around in skin tight blue jeans uh, come on uh, I preached with Ricky Savage uh, amen his granddaddy uh, was one of the greatest men that ever walked uh, and now uh, if you view him online this morning uh, he's such a disgrace uh, and he will mock everything we believe uh, you want to know why the pressure finally got high enough uh, that he cursed his wife uh, and said there ain't nothing to it uh, amen his wife finally ratcheted up the pressure uh, and said I ain't going to live and he said well I gonna live without you. Amen. And so he said, we'll just compromise together. Yeah, I called his name. Are y'all gonna let me preach? If you don't like it, talk to Paul about it. I'm here to tell you the pressure is on. And you say, well, Brother Brent, I know you'd never compromise. Don't say that. You want to know why? Every day the devil puts me in the cooker and he says, I wonder if I can take enough pressure. Amen. To make him curse. I'm planning on staying away. I've got every intention of doing right. And Peter never planned on staying by the devil's fire but it's going to take grace from another dimension it's going to take power from another realm and it's going to take faith like you've never had faith before to stand when everything around you is confusion and chaos and calamity lift your hands and ask God to help me Go ahead and get you four years of education. I love it. I'm not against that. That's why you're here. I'm supporting y'all. He don't care if your granddad's a holiness preacher. He got your daddy's sister raised by one of the greatest men ever walked. Why won't he get you? All he wants to do is crank it up just enough to make you curse. Well, you heard that guy teach Sunday school today. That guy would never quit. He's got a sister to quit. Well, that guy right there, that's Brother Brent Gabbard. That's an usher. He's a, I'm going to tell you something. That's the exact one the devil wants. Now, brother, I'm going to go out on a big limb, okay, this morning. Are you a little confused by all this? I don't know if you've had a shot or not, and I've had one or not. I don't trust him. But my wife coughed all night again last night. All night long, my wife coughed. I'm trying to trust him. I believe he's a healer. I seen him heal Naomi right here. But we buried Sister Pam. Yeah, tell me, I caught him, I shunned him, I Wait a minute, I know God can restore marriages. Look right here, yeah, everybody see that place? Yeah, but wait a minute. I know he can do it. I've, I've walked with him. I've seen him. I, but right now, I'm confused. And I'm standing here by a fire. And maybe I shouldn't be here, but I don't know where else to be. And I don't know what else to do. And if everybody just leave me alone for a little bit, I'll be okay maybe. But y'all keep pushing me. And right now, I have to be honest, I don't really know who that is. And I don't definitely don't know what we're supposed to be doing right now. And that's exactly where you are. You don't want to go back. You know God's a healer. But you don't know how to go forward. You don't want to fight those, those things in your mind, but you don't know how to get them out. I can't tell Eddie 
church, y'all go home, whatever you want to do. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to think these thoughts, but I don't know where they're coming from. I know, I know. Amen. I just made me a little lighthearted. Amen. Old Skinner heard his preacher preach, and he said he, pre- he preached on your wife being in subjection, Brother Mosier. And old Skinner had a tattoo right there of a bird, and he wasn't the brightest guy. And he said, Hey, preacher, you need to pray for my wife. She's bellous. He said, She's bellous. He said, Yeah, she ain't injection. He said, Well, rebuke her, Skinner. He said, I've been trying to buke her. She won't buke. <sighs> Are you in this house today? I've been trying to do the devil, preacher. But I'm still waking up with nightmares. I did plead the blood. My baby's still sick. I did get the oil out. I did call for the elders of the church. I did try to have faith. She's still coughing. Are y'all going to help me preach in this house today? His heart's still not working. He's still battling complications. The givenest man in the church, the givenest brothers, the musicians, the ones that live right, the ones that don't give me no trouble. Amen. And that meanwhile, they're out there partying and they're running and they're gunning. And guess what? When we know the back of the story, the world's hurting too. The world's confused. I'm just being facetious here. But the devil says, look at them. They don't go to church and they got plenty of money. They don't pay their tithes. And God, oh, great God, help me. I got down to the altar yesterday and I said, God, I need you to honor your word. You promised if we give, you'd give back. Amen. You promised if we'd pay our tithes, you'd be faithful. And I got some men that's hurting. You're going to have to step up. Amen. Come on, let me preach here. I said, God, don't be angry, but I'm trying to tell them you'll take care of them. And they're going farther in the hole. Oh, God, we got to have revival. Amen. Or somebody's going to crack and somebody's going to curse before this thing's over. Let me bring us to a close. Am I helping anybody today? Enough to make a man curse. Enough to make a woman curse. What are we going to do, Brother Brent? Jeremiah, why would you say cursed be the man that told my daddy the good news of my birth? Because I can't take no more, Brother Brent. I wouldn't mind just living my life. I'd live a good life. I'd just be a good man. I'd serve God. But I wouldn't have to have everybody wouldn't hate me. Then you read at the beginning of the chapter, they had me in stocks again. They had me locked up again. All because I did what he told me to do. I'm not out there. I wasn't there for drinking. I wasn't there for drugging. I wasn't there for starting a riot. I just went and said, God said this, because that's what he told me. They locked me in stocks. My back was up against the wall. Amen. I was in there hurting, and I just wish I'd never been born. Matter of fact, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not saying no more in his name. I'm just going to be a good man. Do you know how many preachers, Brother James, right now? 4,000 churches shut down in the last two years in the United States of America. 4,000 churches permanently closed their doors. Do you know how many holiness preachers got in their pulpit and said, I resign, and they're off somewhere at another church, and they're just sitting on the pew saying, I'm just trying to find out what all this confusion is. Boy, you're doing a great job, Pastor. Thank God it ain't me no more. And they just walked away, and they're just sitting inside. I'm going to serve God, but it's, I'm not saying no more. I'm not dealing with that. I'm not dealing with another broken marriage. I'm not trying to counsel another person. I'm not preaching to one more sinner and getting them saved and giving thing I got to see them walk out the door. I'm just going to go sit on the pew. And Jeremiah said, curse a man that ever told my day the good news. I'll not preach anymore but something happened and I'm closing today with this it was like a fire and the reason you're here today Matthew Mobley is because the fire still burns within you and the reason you got out of bed this morning is because you're not backslid and you haven't cursed and there's still a fire down inside of you. And the reason when you lost your career in a split moment that you didn't quit or go worldly is because somewhere down inside of you uh, there is a fire that's still burning. And because you didn't give up when you lost that baby and lost another baby. Why? Because there's a fire down inside of you. 
And the reason I got in this pulpit this morning after my wife coughed all night long, amen, with steroids uh, and antibiotics uh, and prayer and everything else, uh, I drug my confused hide uh, into this church today uh, trying to figure out uh, how we supposed to do this or do that. Uh, drug myself into this pulpit uh, with a burden on my soul uh, because yesterday in a prayer meeting, uh, amen, with a gentle old brother uh, by the name of Mark High, uh, speaking in a heavenly language uh, in my ear, uh, I heard a voice from heaven. Uh, he even said, go tell them tomorrow. Uh, the devil's trying to make them curse. Uh, ow! And I felt a tr- flicker of fire. Uh, and I said, I'll get in the pulpit one more time. Uh, and I'll preach a word one more time. Uh, and I'll tell them one more time. Uh, amen. Uh, and I did not come here today uh, and make myself stay saved. Uh, I did not make myself preach to you. Uh, but I come in this sanctuary today uh, ready to preach. Uh, give me the microphone. Uh, amen. Uh, his wife ain't home. Uh, he's still not healed. Uh, God still ain't turned it around. Uh, but there is a fire inside of my soul that says God is still a healer. He's still a healer of broken homes. He's still a healer of broken marriages. He still saved lost sons. He can still touch your body. There's a fire inside of my confused mind today that God is still in control. Give him the praise and the glory. This is going to get you because it got me. Simon Peter was not the only one I'm about to feel. This thing's fixing to wind up in a way you ain't going to, not because I'm great, because he spoke to me yesterday. Simon Peter wasn't the only one that heard those things. Simon Peter wasn't the only one confused. All them other disciples were standing in the shadows too, except one. Except one. He didn't know what was going on either. He didn't know how this was going to work out either. None of them did. Christ even said, there's some things only my Father in heaven knows. Even Christ himself said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But while one man cursed by the fire, one man cradled the cross. I don't understand either. Drops of blood fell down on him. And he knelt at the cross. And the only way you and I is going to make it through this confusion, and the only way you and I is going to make it through this chaos and calamity, charity is if we get the foot of the cross and let his blood drip down on us. You can allow the calamity to cause you to curse. Or you can find the Christ on the cross and hold, hang on to hope in the darkest day of your life. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. Oh, I heard a verse say, I will cling to the old, not my cross, I got my cross to carry. I will cling, sing it with me, to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday. There it is. There it is. There it is. How am I going to get that crown and keep from cursing? How am I going to make it to the finish line? I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it. Oh, God, I can't hardly preach for feeling it on me this morning. I feel that fire shut up in my bones. I felt it yesterday, Whitney, for you. And I'm going to tell you how we're going to make it while everybody's dropping like dominoes around us. Sister Roxanne, the same way we've made it the last 10 years together, we've been holding on to the cross. Uh, this ain't the first trial we've come through. Uh, hey, man, it may seem to be the, y'all ain't in this house. Uh, it may seem to be the, how are we going to make it, Johnny? Uh, the same way you and your wife sit in my office. Uh, and I said, the devil said it's hopeless. Uh, but we just held to the cross. Uh, 
uh, and we went to one service after another uh, and we clung to the cross. Uh, I can remember the times you and your wife, uh, amen, buried that altar in tears uh, at the foot of the cross. Uh, amen, while you were there shedding your tears, uh, his blood uh, was dripping down upon you. Uh, and I got good news for you. Uh, it's through his blood uh, and his blood alone uh, and clinging to the cross uh, is the only way you and I uh, are gonna come through this. Uh, and the reason people have cursed and quit uh, is because they walked away uh, and they got too far away uh, from the cross. Uh, amen, to understand it's gonna be a better day one day. Stand all over the house and I'll just quit. You will either allow the calamity to cause you to curse or you will cling to the cross today. But that's what's going to happen in this service. But what about Peter? on that resurrection morning when Mary and them came. And by the way, Mary Magdalene was at the foot of the cross and Mary the mother of Jesus. Remember that? And Jesus said, John, behold thy mother. Father, behold thy son. By the way, in the middle of all that, God still had a job for John to do, didn't he? Oh, could I preach that just for a second? We can't shut the church down in the midst of all this. We can't quit coming and all. We got a job to do. We got people that we got to help win to the Lord. We got we got work to do. Amen. We got we got we got to stay we got to stay at the cross, brother White. We got to stay close because the job is not just because there's calamity and confusion all around us. The work of God. Hey, I need you to take care of my mama, John. Yes, sir. Get some more blood spilled down on him. I'll do it. With your blood on me, I can overcome anything. With your blood on me, nothing. Formed against me shall prosper. And right now, Brother Mark, I, we're in the back of Hebrews, and others were sawn asunder, and others were tortured, and others, and we've had some that didn't get healed, but he's still the same healer and deliverer that he was in the first part of Hebrews. And the same God that healed in old Robert's Tense Crusades is still a healer today. And when he chooses not to, her, and I don't want to put all the blame on God, if our faith is too weak, forgive us. But I don't know about you, I'm trying to live the best I can to go to church and pray every Saturday here at the church with a brother. I'm trying. I know people's living a lot closer than I am. They're not having a great earth shaking revivals and wheelchairs being lined up. Now. They're seeing one here or there like we are. So we got John at the cross. We got still got Peter out there by the fire, and he's cursing. When from a man carrying a cross or in a trial, in the midst of all the spitting and the He's looking at me. Remember what I told you? You don't think I'm Christ? I told you this was going to happen. And today in this service, maybe you've already cursed. Maybe you've already said, I, that's my last service. Maybe you've already said, what's the... But the reason God spoke to me today is because somebody's looking at you from the cross. Hey, hey, hey. Come on now. And Brother Matthew, Peter's sobbing. He told me I was going to do this when all of a sudden his mind goes back to another message. Satan hath desired to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for thee. And when thou art converted, the way you get converted is you obviously had to have a problem. You must have fell because he told him that when he was already saved and on fire. So there's going to come a fall, but when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. And all of a sudden, by the fire, he, 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 just enough had caused him to curse. But all of a sudden, he felt hope. He told me this. He is God. I don't know what he's doing, but he, he, he even told me I was going, this is the same man that opened blinded eyes. I'm not crazy. He did unstop deaf ears. And he even told me what I was going to do before I even did it. He is Christ. 
reason you're here today is because you know down inside there ain't nothing out in this old world worth living for. You done tried that. You done, you've done hurt the voice of the devil that says the pressure's too great. Curse and give up. It doesn't fix anything. And I, I'm sorry to keep you standing so long, but I must finish this. Listen to me. If you're here and you, you've caved, Christ is looking your way today. He ain't gave up on you. And this is what he says when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. And a few days later when he steps out of the tomb, he says, go tell my disciples. Oh, and just in case you, could, you would try to cut Peter out because of that fire issue, you tell Peter too. I want to meet him. We got a meeting set up. Woo, feel the Holy Ghost in my soul. Yeah, take my shakamahaya. And I'll come and tell somebody in the house today, hey man, you may be crying today and the devil's trying everything to make you curse and you're confused and there's calamity and chaos, but guess what's going to happen in a few days? Uh, the day of Pentecost is going to come uh, and you're going to understand why the devil done everything he could to make you curse. And I'm fixing to tell you something and the devil says, don't you say it, don't you say it, don't you say it. I'm saying it anyway. You listen to me. He's doing everything he can to stop my church. He's doing everything he can to get me discouraged. You want to know why? Because the promises have went out and the promises of God and y'all just thought we shouted earlier even our yea and amen and the reason he's trying to get us to curse is because there's a day of Pentecost coming and there's a move of God coming we ain't always going to be standing here with blood dripping on us in this confusion and chaos and the re he don't want you to be here when it happens he don't want you to have part in it he wants your home to be broke up he wants everybody can and he's going to get everybody can but for those that will cling to the old rugged cross he's got a message is for you. Uh, Pentecost is coming. Uh, this ain't the end of the story. Uh, a resurrection morning uh, is coming. Uh, a healing is coming again. Uh, I'm going to fill the church. Uh, I am going to heal the sick. Uh, I am going to move. Uh, I am going to restore homes again. Uh, I am going to bring the juvie kids in. It's coming. It will just not curse the day. I'm not sure if Hannah's going to be able to sing this morning. I see the Holy Ghost on her. Because somewhere down inside, the devil's pulled out every stop to try to get Hannah to curse and quit. But there's one thing you got to say for Hannah. She don't quit. And she just keeps coming. And she keeps drawing closer. And I'm telling Hannah today, revival's on its way. telling Lexi today revival's on its way and I'm telling Justin White revival's on its way just last week God done something you never thought could be done I got a phone call you never thought I'd get I talked to him again this week God's moving that's why the devil's trying to get us to curse I felt the Holy Ghost come in and touch a drunk man laying beside his bed and prayed over him and the power of God moved in there and I talked to him this week he said I ain't drunk, drunk a drop since you left preacher now you're going to shout again brother we're going to have church don't quit now amen don't quit now don't quit now don't quit now did you fail the Lord did the devil tell you that's it you know why I told you that, don't you? He's terrified of you, Jeff. He's terrified of you getting on fire for God. You know people that I don't know. You're going to bring people in that I can't bring in. He's terrified of Johnny Murphy being on fire for God. He's terrified of you. I'll be honest with you, that haircut you got kind of scares me. Praise God. Somebody praise him in the house. I just heard the Holy Ghost say, Not everybody quit. Hallelujah. Anybody feel like praying? Going up and start praying. I'm just having church right now. I'm just talking to people. 
Hey, look over here. Look at this guy. The devil said, that guy never go to church. He's been a junkyard dog. He ain't his big old teddy bear. He's my friend. What do you think about this? Is God moving or what? see everybody's quitting. You need to see who's coming. I thought for sure the devil would get you to curse God and die. You know what Tim said? Tim said, I got more to go to heaven for than I ever had. He said, brother, there ain't no time to play games. We're in the last days. I don't think that's what the devil wanted, Tim. I think you run this party. Are we going to keep on running the devil's party? Are you going to keep coming to church? You're not going to quit? Would you be offended if Brother Brent told you the devil told me you wasn't going to stay in here? And I'm not saying I believed everything, but he told me I'll get to him. He'll never stay. He'll be back out there drunk carrying on within a week or two. Well, it's been five weeks. He's still in the house of God today. He told me you wouldn't last a week. Now, I didn't believe him. It's been over a year. You're doing better than you ever done. I wish somebody would praise him in the house today. Let me tell you something. You need to stick with us. You want to know why? Because a couple months from now, things is going to be totally different than they are today. You mark it down, I'll sign my name to it. Now that's from a preacher that's confused as a termite and a yo-yo over some things, but I felt real clear about that. A couple months from now, it's going to be all different. Lift your hands and let's have an altar call today. Sing your hand if you can. Woo! Lift your hands, let's have an altar call this morning. Before everybody comes, before everybody comes, be a brother or sister, that's confused today, step out first. Will there be a brother or sister that's facing calamity? Step out first. Would there be somebody here the devil says, you ain't going to be no good Christian. Would you come first? God bless Brother Embry. God love him. There's some people in here that's confused. They're in the days. They don't know where to turn. Well, it looks like I preached a handful. Is there anybody like to come pray with these? Make a man curse. That's how much pressure he's trying to put on you.